r slash ask reddit what fake thing that happens in movies pisses you off firing guns in enclosed spaces not deafening anyone at least archer got this right and black hawk down when someone is driving and they look away from the road by looking at the person in the passenger seat for a prolonged amount of time or when they are constantly turning the wheel and the car doesn't move things like that bother me too much lol parasite actually did this pretty well there's a scene where the father's driving the rich guy and is doing just that and i was getting anxious seeing him do that and then the rich guy gets pissed and tells him to keep his eyes on the road i always wonder what this was trying to tell the audience when an actor clearly has no idea how to play the instrument they're holding they don't have to be an expert but christ someone show them where their fingers are supposed to go or stop focusing the shot on their fingers flipped very well in school of rock where jack black is an accomplished musician and the kids in the band really did play their instruments sang after a hit to the head or being knocked unconscious people are fine after a minute concussions don't seem to exist in movies it's super bad for you acting like an easily removable piece of duct tape silences someone yes in real life it only muffles the screaming slightly well plus you could just push it off with your tongue Turning on the TV at the exact moment a relevant news report starts. Whenever some idiot is running on foot while being chased by a car that's trying to run them down, they without fail always run straight down the middle of the street, when all they have to do is simply run off to the side where there's trees and lampposts and plenty of other shit to block them from getting hit. In that case, I always root for whoever's driving. This is common when running away from almost anything. Big boulder chasing you down. Run straight, never turn, some tall skinny pillar falling down, run lengthwise, don't try to sidestep it, or when they do run to the side it's always at the last second for style points, when they could have sidestepped it from the very beginning, but it wouldn't have looked as cool. In action movies, the hero, often alone faces an army of elite trained veterans armed to the teeth but they can't seem to know how to shoot, take cover, use tactics or fight. And why are they taking turns to get their asses kicked? Just stomp the mother ducker. Steven Seagal movies are the worst at this. Seagal will fight a whole room of bad guys who attack one at a time after announcing their presence. If all 8 of them just went in at once, they'd easily murder him. EMT's doctor's random hero person using a defibrillator on a person that has flatlined. That is not how it works. You shock a flatline and all you do is make the patient even more dead. Flatliners get drugs to get their hearts beating, and then get shocked if that beat is abnormal. Drowning revivals. Victim is pulled, blue, from the water. Couple of chest compressions. Hero through gritted teeth says don't you die on me goddammit. Small arc of water shoots from the mouth of the victim as they cough twice and immediately regain consciousness. Sit up and ask what happened. Alright. It's not the chest compressions that do it, it's the unconscious, possibly dead, person hearing don't you die on me, damn it, that really brings them back to life, medical fact. Any scene where chloroform knocks someone out in 2 seconds, I feel like Rio officially has gone too far. It takes at least 5 minutes and the dose difference between asleep and dead is really slim. When the plot necessitates the protagonist to be unconscious for several hours due to a blow to the head, then he she just regains consciousness, shakes their head a few times, and is back to normal. I've had several concussions from sports in my life, and only one where I lost consciousness, and that was for maybe several seconds. For that one I spent weeks fighting nausea, headaches, and vision problems. My mood was impacted for months. There's no way I could just get up and start kicking ass after being out for several hours. How terrible the bad guys are at shooting. Shooting the monitor is a way of stopping the computer. Alright let me tell you the good news. We don't need the monitor. That a sample can be DNA processed in 2 minutes so you know who your killer is. On Lucifer. It's so over the top. I'm not even mad. The CSI chick will be standing over the body at the crime scene and tell them what the lab results were. Romantic dramas. Some stupid miscommunication that could have been resolved with 5 minutes of conversation and a phone call turns into some feature length bullshit. 
Gift wrapping the box and the lid separately. I mean, I get why they do it. Multiple takes. But it always sticks out to me. Also, every bag of groceries has French bread. All the groceries apart from the French bread are spherical items like oranges and melons and they always drop them and they roll away. Homes are always spotless and ridiculously large. The old out of the blue intentional T-bone car accident. Like the bad guy is psychic and knew when and where to be. And is totally immune to the flow of traffic so they could time it just right to T-bone someone in an intersection. Absurd. Not to mention it never seems to actually succeed in causing the death of the intended victim. Nor does the bad guy ever seem to get injured at all. In British soaps, which are shite in general everyone goes to the pub every day but no one ever gets drunk. They also order a pint. Take one sip and then just leave. Let me kill all the bad guys to prove my innocence. Kill an army of mooks. But you can't kill the bad guy with a name because my cycle of revenge would be just like him. Zoom in on that. Can you make it clearer? Left single quotation mark. Sure. No problem. To MPC CTV screen grab. Women's hair is always perfect after a crazy action sequence. They're also wearing heels all the time. No matter what crazy stunts they're doing. This one makes me crazy. If your job involves running, jumping, fighting, or any sort of physical activity at all, you don't wear stilettos. College professors being shown living in giant Victorian houses with massive libraries. I used to be a professor, and can confirm that the pay isn't that good. Movie depictions of childbirth are often ridiculously wrong. They make it look so easy, quick, and clean. This is not the case. Fire, lava, etc. Has no heat people can be suspended over a volcano. Or in the case of the Hobbit, surf on molten metal and no one gets so much as a blister. Add to this, characters falling into the lava and sinking like it's just glowing yellow pudding. Setting aside that they'd probably actually burst into flame and steam on contact, if not before. Lava still has the density of rock. You ain't gonna sink into that. When someone throws a grenade into a building and the whole building blows up. Grenades in movies either destroy everything in a mile radius or they are the equivalent of light shove. There is no in between. Digging graves in wooded areas. There are ducking roots everywhere. You can't dig a 6 foot grave with a pair of shovels in an hour. That shit takes time. Slight inconveniences that could easily be solved that are the main conflict of the movie. The doorbell rings and someone answers almost immediately. There is a delicious breakfast on the table, but everyone grabs a piece of bread and runs off to work. The fresh out of college student scoring a great apartment in a swanky part of town while working minimum wage job for themselves. In reality, you'd have 4 roommates for such a place, or you're living in a dump in a bad part of town. Guys who get rejected and then stalk the girl and win her over at the end of the movie. Mafia guys, mobsters or hitmen, people who are in the business of killing people and disappearing inconveniences are intentionally clumsy or stupid when it comes to kill the protagonist. No double tap, overcomplicated killing, taking their sweet time, not putting more than one or two henchmen for a particularly dangerous hostage. When they give a person CPR and the person walks away unscathed, when you give proper CPR, you are essentially breaking ribs to pump the heart and sure, it doesn't happen to everyone but still see a doc after, that, and anything medically related like EP pens being used then magically all normal. All of these require being looked at a doctor slash emergency care directly afterward. A relatively small woman beats 5 large guys in hand to hand combat. I grew I up with 5 brothers. Had to learn to be tough. Bad science talk in general. Hacking anything in seconds. Everybody being conventionally attractive and just waking up like this even in a war zone. Are people shooting at you? Take cover behind. Anything. Car doors. Drywall. Couches. Tables. Cardboard boxes. It doesn't matter. Everything is bulletproof. Doesn't piss me off. But as a paraplegic whenever someone in a movie is supposed to be disabled and they're using some shitty fold-up wheelchair that you would see in a hospital or Walmart. 
anyone who lives in a wheelchair and has some minimal insurance or medical assistance would have a much better chair. I'm currently sitting with about $4,000 under my ass. Paid about $500 after insurance. The only time someone would be using one of those shitty wheelchairs would be if they were recently injured or are temporarily injured. No matter if someone is punched or stabbed or shot, they go down in one hit unless they are a main character. No pain, moaning or groaning, nor just conveniently down and quiet so as not to steal attention. When people fall in love and decide to spend together the rest of their lives after spending 5 minutes together. All the incorrect, blatantly incorrect physics. No one ever says goodbye on the phone. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.